Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. And uh, so we got another white wine. We're going to go to uh, still uh, California, Napa Valley. Uh, this is the 2010 Honig Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc. Did I say 2010? I got this at World Market for $12.99. Regularly sells for $14.99. Give a little rinse for those watching on the interwebs. Hey! There was a second viewer there. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, $12.99, regularly $14.99. All that meant was that uh, if you're part of the World Market Explorer or whatever program, you got I got a little bit of a uh, discount. Got a little bit of uh, bubbles going on there. A little bit of fizz. This is a tad. All right, so let's, let's talk about this real quick. Um, Honig. So um, it, on the back it says, family-owned, sustainably farmed, solar-powered. So, um, you know, they're definitely going for sustainability. I think, I want to say they were talking about um, biodynamics, but they may not have gone that, they may not have gone that down, down that road yet. I mean, they use a lot of, I mean, they're, they're, let's see, blah, 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 blah. And they don't say that they're biodynamic, but they have sustainability, which in biodynamic really has a, there's a lot of other stuff that goes on with that. And it doesn't mean you can't have a, quote, natural wine without being, you don't have to have, have biodynamics to have a natural wine. Okay? So, anyway. Come on. Who we are. Histoire. Okay. So, um, in 1964, Lewis Honig purchased a 68-acre ranch in the heart of the Napa Valley and planted with Cab, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, he, was, he sold the fruit, and then um, this was in Rutherford. And then uh, he passed away, leaving the estate to his children and grandchildren. In 81, the family rallied together to produce several hundred cases of Lewis Honig Sauvignon Blanc in the vineyard's old tractor barn. All right, so uh, in 84, his grandson, Michael Honig, took over uh, management. He was only 22 at the time. So, um, so starting in 84, he really you know, got, basically got the winery off the ground, and they, the other family members have helped out. So um, you know, they've definitely got a good history here. I won't read the whole story, but I, I read it. I uh, looked at all the little people stuff. So um, they've, they've definitely got some, uh, a lot of people there. I mean, I'm not saying that no other winery... I'm not saying that other wineries don't care about their wine, but you know they do really. Looks like they put a lot of their heart and soul, blood, sweat, and tears into the wine. Again, I know everybody does, uh, but sometimes it, it doesn't come across that way on the website. Um, some people aren't don't have that. I could I could tell if I talked to these people in person, I'd probably have that starry eyed like, you know, fanatical fanaticism about their product, whereas some other people don't necessarily have that fanaticism about whatever they produce, whether it's wine or, or spirits or a company they work for, you know, but, um, so they obviously really, I mean, I don't know, I get it from the website that they're very passionate about their stuff. Okay, so Sauvignon Blanc, um, what do I want to say? Okay, so Sauvignon Blanc from California, um, according to, ooh, I didn't get, oh, that's right, because on the website I didn't have the 2010. All right, so the 2011 has three grapes in it. It's 96% Sauvignon Blanc, 3% Semillon, 1% Muscat. So I don't know um, if this is a similar product where there might be Semillon and Muscat in it and if the percentages are similar, but um, basically it's the Sauvignon Blanc. All right, so let's check it out.
<laughs> nice. All right, so I get that, that grassiness and, wait for it, wait for it, a hint of cat pee. Haven't had that in a while. It's not overpowering, by the way. I mean, you know, I know cat pee, oh, ooh, the ammonia type of stuff. But, I mean, that's classic Savion Blanc um, aroma. And it's just there. I mean, it's, it's, it's not overpowering. I still want to have that. If somebody can find me that cat's pee Savion Blanc from, I think, New Zealand, I want some of that. I've heard about it. I just haven't seen it anywhere. Not that I really look hard for it, but... If you got a line on it, let me know. Send it to me. All right, so, like I said, grassiness, the, 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 that cat pee type of stuff. Not much floral, not much... Um, uh, um, not much floral, not much fruit, but uh, let's see how it tastes. I hope I didn't get the spitting on camera. I think I may have. Sorry about that. I try to really put my nose in there or my face so you don't really see the stuff expirated. Is that the word, right word? From my mouth. Anyway, um, moderate, medium, you know, medium to medium high acid, more like medium acid. Um, getting kind of that, that um, citrusy type of flavors, that, that lemon lime aspect. No cat pee, which is good. We don't want it on the palate, just on the bouquet. Um, maybe a hint of like orange. Maybe a tad bit orange. Really nice. Very smooth. That's you know. Uh, it's got a little bit of body to it. You know, as compared to the compared to the other white I just did, these these items seem to be more in harmony with each other. It doesn't feel like okay, I get the acid and then it's done, and then I get the fruit and then it's done, and then I get the body and it's done. I mean, these seem to be more of, more of the three part harmony together, not just individual parts that you're hearing just those tracks instead of hearing them together. Um, much more balanced. Acid's more contained. I, know, I don't feel like I'm really just salivating like profusely. Um, it, it doesn't have a super amount of tartness, but it's got a little bit of tartness. Uh, chill it a little bit. That Chardonnay might have, might have helped with a little bit of chilling, um, but basically I don't ever chill the white wines a lot. You know what, you know what the honest to God truth is? I don't have any room in the refrigerator to chill it for a little bit. It's packed with other stuff, and I don't have a wine fridge, so um, when I do multiple white wines, I don't really do it. Now, what I will do sometimes is, like, say if I want to drink this bottle tonight, I may throw it in the fridge, for, you know, make some room for, like, the one bottle for, like, an hour, and then pull it out, and then I'll drink it the rest of the night, so it'll warm up back to room temperature by the end of the night anyway. So, but chill a little bit. I think it'd be really refreshing. I think I really like this wine. I think it's well made, um, and then uh, I, I'd probably score it like 89. Yeah, 89 points. Uh, well made. I think it's really good. Um, 15 bucks. Well, you know, I, it is what it is. It's a business, and um, you may. You, I bought it for 13 at, at World Market. Whatever, and I don't know what World Market paid for it. I don't know what Honig's selling it for uh, to the distributor. I mean, I'm sure, you know, at the website, so at the website, it's $17 for a bottle for 2011. So, you know, we're talking all over the board here. I think, I think um, there's other Sauvignon Blancs out there that are a slightly lower price point that are going to be pretty much the same, but this does feel like it's a, it's a higher quality Sauvignon Blanc. So I don't think 15 is totally out of, 
out of uh, the ballpark for for the uh, for the wine. I mean, if you told me it was like thirty bucks, I'd be like, "You're freaking insane." Um, but it's good if you find it, buy it. Especially if you're a World Market Explorer uh, member and you're getting two bucks off on it. You know, it's always great to be part of these little loyalty programs because somewhere along the line, especially if you frequent the place, it's always a good idea to do. I mean, World Market, you don't have to frequent it, you don't have to earn points or anything like that. It's just you just get straight up discounts. Um, Specs is the same way. It's just more of a discount program rather than a um, you know a, a point system. Where it's like restaurants will do that, where the more you come in, you earn points, and when you reach a certain threshold, you get something out of it. Whether it's a coupon, or you get money on some card, or you get an email, or whatever it is. But anyway, so enough about that. The wine, if you find it, buy it. I think it's pretty darn good. Eighty nine points. Um, one, one thing I would do want to mention about the winery um, is that uh, in the whole Easter thing and then Passover and all that, um, I, had, I had thought about changing up my strategy with the Easter candy, still doing it, but trying to have more Passover wines and, and Easter wines. And the Honig name had come up as a Passover wine, you know, being, um, being kosher. But nothing on their website mentioned it. So there was a uh, blog post somewhere and... Uh, it, it was mentioning Passover wines, but they had a list of California wineries that, while they have Jewish ownership, are not um, are not kosher wines. So I want to put that out there. If somebody read that they were kosher, um, apparently they're not, because I had other information saying they were. And I think what it was, they were just making some assumption that said because it was uh, a Jewish ownership that it had to be kosher, which that doesn't necessarily mean that. So I um, just want to make sure that, that people aren't assuming that. Um, if it is kosher, please let me know. Uh, put some on the website that it is, but I'm gathering it's not, which is fine. There's nothing, whether it is or not, is, is, is immaterial to, to me. I think it's a good wine, and I say buy it. All right, so um, that's going to do it. Click the link below for the winery. Click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button. Send a few ducats. I can buy another bottle of Honig. And um, we'll see everyone again next time.